What's up Abletonians, Funnel here. Wanted to do a little video on how you can do sort of dynamic EQing in Ableton Live. Ableton Live does not have a dynamic EQ. It only has a regular EQ. So what is a dynamic EQ? It is an EQ that is not on or off all the time. It does cutting or boosting when something happens. Let's say if a certain sound exceeds a certain threshold or maybe you have a signal that triggers the EQ. So let's actually take a really quick listen to what I got here. There's a, that's a pad sound that will be out on my sample pack one day. There's a bass. Whoops, a kick, sorry. And we can see that uh, in the kick there's a whole lot of energy happening around it's 44 hertz. And that will cause a problem in the mix because I also have a bass line that has energy around 44 hertz. So when I play these sounds together, you can hear that it actually starts farting. They both take up so much space and headroom in the same particular frequency area that something has to be done for that. So I could, I could basically, I could compress the whole baseline signal when the kick hits, but I don't want to compress the whole signal. Let's say if, if I, if I wanted to keep the bass noisy like this, Let's actually keep it like that. What I want to do is I want to use the kick as a signal for an EQ on the bass, cha bass channel. What I want to do is I want to use the kick as a signal that will trigger EQ cutting on the bass channel. So what I will need is EQ on bass channel. I have it. And on the kick channel, I will load up what's called an envelope follower let's just look it up there it is and it'll load up yeah you, you're going to need the max for live pack for able to live buy it if you don't have it there's a whole lot of pretty deep stuff let's solo this track here and what envelope follower does is creates uh, well you can pretty much see what's happening you will get an instrument that will uh, read the signal of the channel and this signal is something that you can use to modulate a parameter anywhere pretty much pretty much anything so what I want to do is I want to I'll click on map and now I will click on the destination let's go for this um, EQ here oops I sort of messed up with one more time map and um, gain all right I have to actually uh, activate the EQ node I will set this around 44 Hertz because that's what I've been saying let's uh, let's just play this and see what happens okay I'm sort of getting what I wanted to get but it's sort of wrong because the values on envelope follower has to be tuned a little bit this is the minimum value and this is maximum so basically when when the curve goes up and down it goes from this minimum value to maximum so in terms of having this EQ node to do something I wanted to go from halfway here to all the way to the bottom so I have to set this parameter uh, which goes from 0 to 100 to halfway so 50 and this all the way to zero so let's take a look and there you have it it's doing exactly what I wanted to do and notice that compared to regular side chain compression this is a whole lot better because you can get very specific with it I mean I could I can get very narrow with it or whatever and as you can hear, I am not compressing the whole signal. I can, I can keep the noisy part because for in this, for whatever reason, now I want to keep the noisy part. I only want the sub to give way for the kick so that they're not 
clashing and in mastering there won't be any problems trust me if you have a kick and sub that clash it will mean a whole lot of problems in mastering it will start farting and you cannot get it very loud but so yeah there it is max for live in ableton live use an envelope follower on your kick track or anything this is just an example so map its signal to wherever you want it in my case it's the eq node that gives way to the kick so yeah hell yeah that's it if you have any questions hit me up laters peace out